Good morning and welcome to live Q&A here in the Manager Critic Group. For those who don't know me, I'm Cheryl Andrews. I'm the founder of Step by Step Listening and my mission is to help you do more of what you love and ditch the critic that says you can't. So welcome. Today's video is all about what is modelling and how can it help you do more of what you love. And um, so let's just start, first of all, um, I, this is a term that I came across when I first became a coach and they were saying, we're going to model this and model that. And the only time I'd use the word model in my head at all was like as in a fashion model and what I realized is that that to some extent that is it or when you um, make a clay model so modeling from this perspective is about modeling out actually questioning and mapping out how you do something or how somebody else does it so that you can learn from them so those of you who are writing books those who if you teach people um Oh, if you even teach your children how to tie a shoelace, you have to work, you, you, might, you do it on autopilot now, but to teach a child how to do it, you'd have to model out, all oh, right, so the first thing you need to do is pull the lace tight and then you need to do one loop and then you do another loop and wrap it around if that's how you do them or you have one loop and you wrap it around and you pull it through. So when you're translating information to teach, that's why they say um, that when you become a teacher, when you teach somebody something you know, that's why becoming an author, writing about what you know, when you're modelling out how you do something or even how you've learnt something or how you've applied it, that step-by-step -step process has two benefits. One, you get to know much clearer what it is you do and how you do it, why you do it. And it becomes teachable. It's something you can explain to other people. This is the process. And um, what often happens when you start modelling out how you do everyday things, what you'll find is that your brain has kept hold of some old processes and procedures, perhaps um, when you were younger. Um, it might have, you might be doing things that actually even now you know when you map it out, you think, actually, that's inefficient. I actually know I can skip that step and go to there. But your brain's been doing it on autopilot because that's what it's always known. And you haven't taken the time to update your system. So the benefit of modelling is that one, you get to know yourself even better and you can delete data and processes and steps that are not working for you, that you now know, even you just looking at it, you go, well, that's inefficient, that's not effective. You know, that worked when I didn't know how to do that, but I don't need to do that right now. Secondly, you can teach it to other people. And thirdly, if you go and listen to other people who teach you how they do the same thing, you know your model, so you can add, just update the pieces. So for example, I see it happen all the time. Let's say people go on a course to um, manage their time or to be more effective or be better managers etc and somebody teaches them their seven step strategy to whatever it might be and then your brain is trying to learn this whole brand new strategy and usually without any conscious awareness that you already have a process to do that it doesn't matter what it is um, let's say you want to I don't know build a boat I'm just making it up now all right you will have a process right now for building something, whether it's building a business, um, building a wall, building a life. So the word build or building has meaning to you and it has a definition. And even if you haven't physically done it, you will also have a perception of what you perceive other people do when they build a boat. And so if you map out what you believe, this is modelling, map out the process that you believe you're doing, and what works for you. When you go to get taught by somebody else, instead of having to learn the whole new system, you'll go, oh, actually, I already know steps fives. So it's just those two that this expert's teaching me that I had no idea you needed to consider. And therefore, you've only got to learn two parts and update your system. And for me, that's a much more effective, more efficient way of learning. It's a much more effective and efficient way of maintaining clarity and confidence. And of course, change becomes much easier when you do that. So one of the things I work with with the clients is all the time getting clarity of what you want. So let's make a decision. We then look at if it was just the way you'd like it to be, it would be like what? We then get back to what is currently working or how do you do that right now? What, what is your process? So we know exactly what's happening now. We know exactly how they'd like it to be. Then we map out what's happening in between. So what they believe is going to need to happen. 
and then we celebrate changes every time there's a small improvement so that they always are reassuring their system that they are on track to reach their goal, their destination, the outcome that they want. Another way of building confidence is to stop looking forward to what you want and stop looking to just see if things are changing, but just stop and actually get curious about how you do this and how other people do this. And this is what the Do Delegate or Ditch program that I run is all about. It's all about stopping and thinking about six core pro models. So how do you do learning? When you're learning at your best, that's like what? So you get curious about where you are, what happens just before, um, how do you need to be, what resources or support do you need? What's the process? What's the first thing that needs to happen? And so for me, when I did my model, you know, nine, ten years ago, what I realised is if I didn't understand how the thing that I was learning was going to be um, practically applied in my life, while I was learning it, I'd feel really uneasy, really uncomfortable. It's like um, I didn't know where to park the information. I didn't know which box in my head to, to put the information away. I didn't know how to attach it to what I already know. And so for me, my metaphor for learning my best was like a jigsaw puzzle. But I have to have the box there. I need to see the picture and I need to see what we're heading for. Now, that's how I used to learn 10 years ago. But having modelled that and then modelled other people and realised that some people, when they're learning at their best, they just like seeing little bits of the jigsaw come together, just looking for little patterns and seeing for connections and allowing the picture to evolve and to grow without any clear idea what it's going to make, that that whole adventure, that the whole not knowing is what makes learning for them so exciting. That experience of sharing my model with them and them sharing me their model with me gave me a new perspective, how I could approach learning. And so when I'm doing something that I, at the moment I'm doing an online course to learn how to build an online program and um, I need and I've it's much easier for me if I've got a structure and I know exactly what I'm doing and how that fits into the big picture and how that's going to fit into my business because when I get stuck that's my motivation when I get a bit you know frustrated or I can't work it out I know why I'm doing it that will keep pushing me but I've also got that model of this other person that's just, just really playful and I like so every day sometimes if something's coming up I'm like I actually have no idea how I'm going to apply this but I'm just going to have fun learning it and I'm going to trust it's got value because it's bringing me joy right now. So with that all in mind, um, what I want to um, talk you through are the six models we use in the Do Delegate or Ditch process. And my invitation today is for you as a group to actually start thinking about your model of what is happening when you're working at your best. And the reason that we do six models on the Do Delegate or Ditch program is because David Grove worked out that there was some power in asking the same asking questions six questions or more of the same thing and that took the 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 brain's uh, thinking to another level so you go from your conscious mind to your subconscious mind and i can ask somebody um so when you're working your best that's like what what kind of working is that working is there anything else about that working um where whereabouts is that working does it have a shape or size and is there anything else? And if I keep asking if the same word, um, often when I get to about the fifth question, that people aren't used to being asked that many questions about the same thing. And so some people can go, oh, for goodness sake, if you ask me any more questions, I really don't like it. But if I just hold that space and just say, and is there anything else about that? It's almost like something tips over on that fifth or sixth question that it just opens up this this beautiful box of curiosity and information that maybe had been locked away that had you know because we haven't stopped that long to ask that many questions of one thing it's like we've only ever been scraping the surface of the the little jewelry box and those five or six questions that fifth and sixth question seems to sort of brush off all the the dust and allow the box to open and all the magic and the, the gorgeousness comes seeping out. So be patient with yourself and be kind to yourself. Um, but what I want to encourage you to do is to think about over the next five to six weeks while we're in the group, we're going to look at the individual models and this week is working. Um, but I'm going to tell you now the six of them so that you know why and you can see how it works. But we look at your working at your best model. We look at how you what's happening when you're learning at your best. We also look at what will be happening if you're living at your best. And the reason why I've done that is because what I found when I was working with clients and their decisions weren't sticking 
they, they make a decision but it didn't work out they didn't get to do more of what they love usually it's because the one thing they'd asked for the, that's almost like the wish they got from the genie uh, didn't make sure it looked after their their three core areas it, they were either really focused on their family or really focused on their business or really focused on themselves and they weren't looking at how that's going to impact family and business and so I believe that it's really important to make sure when your decision making is being made that they're inclusive of all your key areas so you your personal life and you personally your personal relationships and your business relationships so that's why we're going to do that those models and then in order to live a life you have to make decisions every single day to be a healthy version of you you've got to decide what to eat decide whether to exercise decide to move you're going to decide whether to speak or whether to be quiet you're going to decide whether to go to bed or to stay up you're going to decide whether to watch telly or to get some more stuff done you're going to decide whether to write the book or talk about it there's all everything in life is about decisions so they i found there was three core skills that repeatedly when i was coaching people one to one we would end up modeling these skills out and it's when they got the models for these decisions that it really started to make a difference so we do um, when you're making a good decision that's like what um, we look at time when you're managing time at your best that's like what and we also look at when you're planning at your best and so taking the power of six on uh, David Grove's theory what I found is when I did those six models with my clients they had a foundation of what they wanted it to look like so they knew in the future if if working, learning and living was working in harmony. I don't think it is a case of work-life balance, by the way. I think it's more about rhythm. So you're sort of, how do you flow from your work process into your living and how do you keep yourself? It's almost like a, a figure of eight and you're, it, it's, a, it's a constant moving cycle. It's how do you switch from one role to one purpose, from you know, change your hats, whatever metaphor you want to use from it. It's more about the transitioning from one place to the other. And so when you get a model of how you do those three, you can then create a model for when all of that's happening at the same time, that's like what? And for me, it's like um, it's like magical parcels being posted around the world. I'm flying and I'm traveling and I'm meeting lots of people. And it and it is it's like going on holiday a lot. It's like lot, having lots and lots of bursts of adventure and, and new people and new experiences. And then when you get your the skills that you need modeled out, then you are consciously able to, on a regular basis, update how you make a decision. And so we're going to look at decision making later on in the, the course that we're doing here free in the Facebook group. And of course, if you want to work with me one to one, you don't want to wait eight weeks here or you want to have somebody to really hold your hand to, to make sure that you're digging deep and that you're hearing and seeing everything about your patterns. And you really want to get those foundations in place that you are sick of the overwhelm, you're sick of the manager critic, you're sick of feeling stuck and not able to move forward and you're ready to really take your learning about yourself to the next level then obviously get in touch so i'm going to leave you now with some questions for working at your best and i'm going to show you how to model that out and then i'm going to wish you a lovely weekend so the first model is working at your best so the questions i want to ask yourself is when you're working your best that's like what and then just write down everything that comes to mind and then I want to invite you to look over those words and pick three words that you're drawn to and highlight them or draw on, you know, circle them or do whatever you need to do. And then you're going to ask yourself six questions about those words. So um, a client I worked with yesterday um, had efficient, focused and on task. And so yesterday when we were working together, we worked modeled out efficient. So efficient is like what? Is there anything else about that efficient? Um, whereabouts is that? So whatever your word is, it's, is there anything else about that? What kind of is that? Whereabouts is that? And just notice, is there a, you know, does it have a location? It does efficient or working your best or whatever word you've come up with. Um, do you have a feeling inside or can you see it outside? Is it something you hear? Is it something you taste? Is it something you, you know, is it something you, you know, so how are you, what are your senses? What, which ones are you tuning into? Which ones are you noticing? So it's like, what? Is there anything else about that? What kind of? Where is it? Does it have a shape or size? 
And once you've got all those words and you've got an example of it, if you can draw it or represent it in some way, that would be great. And then you're going to do what I call sequencing, or that's what the process in clean language is. So you're going to have this image, this, this representation. It might be a page of words. It might be a picture. It might be a feeling or a sense. So when you're working at your best, that's like, and you'll have all that. And then I want you to be curious about then what happens. And I want you to get a separate piece of paper or a post-it note and write down what's the next thing that happens. And then do the same again with that. So you'll ask the same six questions. That's like what? Is there anything else about that? What kind of? Whereabouts is it? Does it have a shape or size? Get really curious about what's happening there. And then ask yourself, then what happens? And you'll have another post-it note and you can repeat that process. So in this case, we've now done what I call six sequences, no, three sequences. You've got your first, this is like what? Then what happens? Then what happens? And you can do this until you feel there is nothing left in the process. So you could ask what happens in between those two post-it notes and you might end up with another post-it note and you develop that again and get lots of information about that until eventually you've got the whole process and you might even say, so what happens just before working at your best? So you'll start to know how you set yourself up for success. And then the last one, and so when all that, then what happens? And invariably, it isn't a logical process as in step by step. It's usually a cycle and we come back to starting that process again. That's where the feedback loop comes in. Um, and you might be different. So what I would like the group to do, and this is what I want to find out if we can start to really get this group to work together, share ideas. But if you start sharing your models, what happens is that if you see somebody's doing something, and you think, oh, that's a much easier way of doing it. You can go and try it on. It's just like going shopping. You can try a few tops on, try a few trousers on, boots, whatever. So you can try other people's processes on and go, oh, do you know what? I think that works for me. I could I could do that. That that looks good. That feels good. That works for me. So if you share your processes with each other, then you can start to really engage with new ways of doing it. And when you share your ideas, you give other people the opportunity to learn from it. But also by us all sharing how we work at our best, what I hope will happen, and this is the real magic that I look forward to, is that we'll all have more compassion and understanding for how different we all are. And then we can have more understanding, we can have less criticism, and we can work more effectively together as well in groups. Have a fantastic week. Speak to you soon.